What's up? Today, we're going to talk about cue points. Okay, so, cue points. I'm going to tell you guys what they are. If you don't know, you probably know, but if you don't know, this is what they are. They're basically just markers that you can jump to within a song. That's all it is. So you can jump from the start to the end. You can jump from a second chorus to the third chorus, vice versa. You could do whatever you want, essentially. You can jump around a song if you set your cue points in advance. Now, how you set the cue points is, let's just delete all these here. Use this section here, a uh, very similar format to Rekordbox, Tractor, and on Serato here. They're all pretty similar, to be honest, which is nice. Um, not very confusing for DJs. <laughs> Now let's say I wanna set a cue point not on this kind of like count in intro, like I wanna set it right on that first beat, which is actually on the second bar here. So I'm gonna set a cue point there. So. Right where that two is is where I want it to be. So I'll just set it there. I can either hit two or I can just click on this button here and I can set the cue point that way. Now. If I'm DJing, I could just hit the cue. But now let's get into the different ways that people actually use their cue points. There's three main ones that I've found. I definitely want to hear from you guys, though. I'm sure there's plenty of different ways that people do it out there. Um, the main one that people usually use, the one that I'm guilty of using, is just using the default colors and the default setup and kind of just using them as like an ordering system. So red is always like the first thing for me, like the first beat, the first phrase of an intro, yellow, second phrase, whatever the third is, so on, so forth, blue, yellow, I think it goes blue, yellow, green, yeah, like even like purple or magenta, yeah, so like even I know kind of like what the colors are in that sense. Now, I need to be better about this for sure, uh, I haven't used Serato in a while to be honest, I'm pretty much... pretty much only using record box these days to be honest but this definitely is still applicable to anyone who's using any sort of software the next two that i'm going to show you are definitely better and i think those are the ways that i'm going to use them moving forward and i think those are the ways that other people should start to use them to be honest um but let me know what you guys think the next one and the first newer kind of method that I learned for different types of cue points and different settings is actually using your cue points based on the element in the song. So for example, this guy DJ Phenom, shout out Phenom, um, he's in Richmond actually. He had, for example, his kicks would always be red or his snares would always be yellow and his vocals would always be blue. So he knew if it was like an acapella in edit, that first cue point would almost always be blue because then he knew like blue was always vocal 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 so he did like kind of like a color-coded system based off of elements which I thought was really really cool so sometimes he would have like five cue points right but then like three of them would be blue because there are three different vocal sections within a song that he would then jump to so if he was scratching over something and if he was dropping in a kick on the one or a snare and he wanted to play around with that he would do it that way. I thought it was really great. I think this style is really good for someone who has a lot of technical skill and Phenom is someone who does have a lot of technical skill. Very good scratcher. I uh, haven't really seen him beat juggle, but really good scratcher to be honest. And he would slam a lot of things in on the one or he would, he would like to scratch a bit before he'd even like blend two songs together. And I found that this methodology was the best, honestly. He was crushing it every single time I saw him DJ, so. Definitely recommend you guys trying this if you are more of a technical scratch-based DJ. I definitely think this is a cool way that people label things. Um, probably not gonna use it for me personally, but I definitely could see why someone would wanna do it this way. Now the third and final way that I've seen people set cue points recently, which I really like, methodology that I'm gonna really start implementing with all of my cue points and things like that moving forward is a color-coded system based off of phrases. I think that's a really great way to do it. So for example, you could have, let's say, three red cue points, right? And then those three red cue points would always, let's like say red is always your chorus, always your chorus. So then you would just literally have three reds and you would just do like chorus one, two, three, et cetera, right? And then let's say blue is your verse. Uh, I don't know, orange is your bridge if there is one in the song. 
and let's say yellow is your intro or outro. I thought this was a really good way of doing it. I forget who I saw actually do this, but I thought it was a great way of going about it. Um, the red cue points, just so you knew where every chorus was and you kind of had them in order there. So if there was three choruses in a song, you would know like one, two, three, blue for the verses. And the, the stack would almost be like red, blue, red, blue yellow, orange, whatever. Or it'd be like yellow, because it'd be an intro edit. Then there would be blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, orange, and then red again, and then a yellow again. So it would kind of follow the format of the song. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. You go back to the original way you were doing it as like when you first started DJing, where you just kind of set the cue points blindly, like the first eight ones, and you had this like giant rainbow on whatever deck you were using. But with this strategy, you have that, but you also have a color-coded system at the same time, which I think not only will help you stay organized, it well, I think kind of enhance your DJing. You'll probably start DJing a little bit faster. You'll probably just skip all the BS and jump straight to the good parts. And maybe you can label it that way. You could title it like good chorus, bad chorus, good verse, bad verse. Like this parts you maybe want to skip over, things you want to get right to. A lot of times I skip over bridges. People don't really know bridges to songs. So this is a great strategy and I'm definitely going to use this one moving forward. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I am actually in the process of moving right now, so the place kind of looks a little bare bones. There's not that banner behind me that I like that I usually have. So next week, hopefully the week after that, I'll have some sort of new dig, some kind of nice new setup to show off or something like that. Maybe I get like a gamer kind of look. I'll just do like LEDs around the place for no reason. But until that point in time, take it easy. Tell someone you love them all that good stuff. And I'll be back soon. Ish.